Hello YouTube, Simon here, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be taking on the hard mode challenge for the Wacker Box mini game. So this can occur in chapter 14 and once you make your way over to the children's secret hideout you can speak to the same person that gave us the normal mode challenge earlier on. But obviously this one is going to be a little bit trickier but with these tips you'll be able to take it on without too much of a problem. So in terms of setup I'm strongly going to recommend the hard edge weapon here. We are going to be needing to use the ability from the hard edge weapon and you cannot do so unless it's equipped and I've just chucked a couple of first strike materia onto cloud as well just to help us out as we uh, get started initially. Also shout out to Randall Walcott for becoming our latest patron and thank you to everybody who continues to support the channel. So we are going to be selecting hard mode difficulty of course you can see the prizes there. So the goal is for us to reach 30,000 points that will be enough to attain all of the prizes along with the hard mode trophy and that will be the final trophy for this mini game. Okay, so as we begin here, you can see there are, just like with normal mode, multiple different boxes scattered around the place. What's important in order to manage to beat this mini game is to make sure that we know which boxes we need to focus on. So the timer boxes are definitely a priority. They're the red crates, and each time we break one of those, and they have very few HP, by the way, um, you'll get 10 seconds added to your time. That's pretty much essential if you're going to be building up a load of points. Now, as for these 1500 point boxes, many of these are really there to trick you and are only going to slow you down. What you want to focus on is where you have two together like this or any that block your way. And all you need to do is get yourself positioned in between both of the two that are together and then unleash a single Infinity's End ability with your two filled ATB gauges and you should one shot them with no problems whatsoever. Now, of course, you can do that on the single 1500 boxes as well. But because it takes a little bit of time to build up your ATB gauge double, you're better off saving them for the doubles, in my opinion. So the priorities are the red timer boxes and then the 1500 crates where either they're together, so there's two of them together, or where, as in this case, they are simply blocking your path and you have to beat one in order to get through. Um, now, because this one's by itself, I'm just trying to use it to build up my ATB gauge going forward here rather than actually spending two bars just trying to get through it. So there we can see now that we're through to the next area, there's going to be a whole bunch of these red crates, which are super important once again. So make sure you don't neglect them and just keep an eye on them because sometimes the way they're situated under the crates, you can think that you've broken them once you've broken the crates underneath, but you'll turn around and notice that it still is actually there in one piece. So just keep an eye on those red crates that you are indeed breaking them as expected. And then you can start heading up this ramp. Now, there's quite a bit of stuff to get up this ramp, enough to finish us off, hopefully, to 30,000 points. But you do have to break this single 1500 uh, box here in order to get through. So if you want to break the 1500 boxes, you can, of course, still unleash Infinity's End if you have your ATBs filled. Um, or you can just use the strong attack from Punisher Mode and couple that with Dravers, which only takes a single bar, and you'll be through it in no time at all. But just keep making your way up the ramp, switching between Punisher mode and Operator mode as required. Uh, obviously, in order to break the boxes, the strong attack is going to be superior. But for moving around the area, you're going to be walking too slowly in Punisher mode. So make sure you switch back to Operator mode when there's no crates nearby to break. And anyway, there we have it. We've broken the score there. 31,000 uh, of 30,000 points. We're at 31,000 plus. And we've still got 28 seconds left on the clock. Which means that, to be honest with you, as long as you follow these strategies, it's really simple, this minigame. Now, just like with the normal mode, it's kind of annoying that you can't target these crates. So you do have to position uh, Cloud correctly before you unleash your abilities, especially when you're spending two ATB charges at a time. You don't want to put them to waste by having the wrong positioning and then Cloud doesn't even hit anything. So just pay attention to that, but if you got through normal mode, then you know what to expect here. Um, obviously, the trophy is going to be the main draw for many of you in doing this mini game because you are going to need it if you want the platinum. And at a 9% success rate, or 9% um, of folks that have played the game have got that trophy, it's not that low, but it is still low enough to suggest that quite a few people have been struggling with this. So hopefully the video will help you to get it. And I do want to give a shout out to Dan. It was Dan's idea for me to use the Infinity's End ability. And as you can see, it really does work wonders. So it's a fantastic little strategy. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like. Let us know in the comment section if you managed to get the trophy yourself by getting 30,000 points on hard mode. 
And also, if you have any other tips that you want to share that you think will be helpful, that you may think I've missed or something, then please do let us know. I'm sure that will help others that get to read those comments as well. But thanks for stopping by today. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and I'll see you next time for more Final Fantasy VII Remake. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.